It's been a bit of a wait, but Nintendo's popular Animal Crossing franchise has finally hit the Wii. Previously released on the GameCube and Nintendo DS, Animal Crossing is all about living out a second life at a relaxed pace. The heart of the game is interacting with your animal neighbors, who range from cute to a little creepy. There are plenty of things to do in this village, such as fishing, bug collecting, and fossil finding. If you've ever played an Animal Crossing game before, you already know this though. And this is part of the problem. You see, essentially 99% of it city folk is a blended mishmash of the GameCube and Nintendo DS versions. Although this is not a terrible thing since the game is still fun, it means that you're not going to see much new stuff. The Wii game starts out much like the others. You start out as a new resident of a village um, that you get to name. Rover the Cat asks you a series of questions, and your answers determine what you look like. From here, you buy a house from the merciless Tom Nook and get to living your virtual life. One of the biggest additions is the ability to import your character from the Nintendo DS version, but this really only affects how your character will look and what items are unlocked in the catalog of things to buy. So when you bring your DS character over, you won't have all of your items and money in your pockets, but at least you won't have to unlock your items in the store. Animal Crossing City Folk mainly takes its visual look from the DS version, while bringing back the scope of the GameCube version. The rolling log effect returns, uh, which makes it easy to look at the sky uh, to check your constellations as well as see uh, new presents floating away. The village size, however, is nearly double the size of the DS one. Another upgrade is that you can move into four houses that are scattered throughout the town as opposed to just having a four bedroom house in the previous game. The style is as charming as ever and I think the simple look still works for the context of the game but by now you think we'd have something a tiny bit more than a sharper GameCube version running at 60 frames per second in widescreen. Thankfully, online has returned in City Folk. One of the coolest things is that the animals in your town will retain objects such as letters that you've written and show them off to other players during their travels. This becomes a, a crazy sort of viral thing as your influence spreads far and wide. Online on the Wii works pretty much identical to the DS version. Friends code are needed to connect to one another, and as many as four people can hang out in, a, in any given village. Unlike the DS version, the town doesn't shut down when your friends visit. They'll be able to interact with all your animals as they wander around outside. The biggest addition is the ability to incorporate voice chat into your experience using the Wii Speak peripheral. It actually works pretty well, but since it's not a headset, there are no private chats. Everyone in the village hears everything else regardless of proximity. I'm dilly down over there. Come on. Oh. <laughs> For those without the Wii Speak, they still have the ability to chat using the on-screen uh, virtual keyboard, or they can hook up a US keyboard and type really fast. The biggest design change in City Folk is pretty much the city itself. This is supposed to be a living city outside of your village, but it's somewhat of a cop-out. Everything in th that's in the city, things like uh, Red Shop or Katana's fortune telling stand, were already in past versions of the game. They were just never in a centralized spot. The city just seems forced, like they felt obligated to give the Wii version its own thing even if it meant cheapening out. Half the fun of Animal Crossing is meeting the weird assortment of creatures for the first time in your town, but since they show up in the city um, all the time, it kind of ruins the surprise. Even though much hasn't changed uh, from the move from the GameCube to the DS to the Wii, the addictive quality of Animal Crossing is still very much alive in city folk. There are a lot of things to collect, um, a lot of things to discover, and the ability to create is still very much alive in Animal Crossing. And of course, since this is the Wii, they threw in a bunch of Wii motion abilities like casting the rod and chopping trees and digging simply by using motions of the Wii remote. One of my big issues with the DS game also returns in the Wii version. There are no NES games to collect. That was a huge deal in the GameCube game and my driving force for playing, and it's a shame that it's not in the Wii game. Nintendo is very much pushing their virtual console, so you won't be seeing these freebies, and that's too bad. It means uh, that there isn't the same drive to collect these ultra-rare items in the adventure. In the grand scheme of things, though, Animal Crossing City Folk is probably the best of the three games because it combines some of the best elements of the first two. With that said, I still prefer this type of gameplay on a handheld because its design just begs you to take it with you anywhere you go. And even though this game is still Animal Crossing, it's a missed opportunity. Nintendo could have really branched out the online features or something else, but they played it safe. City Folk is still fun, but I do hope that the next Animal Crossing has something much more to offer than a lousy city to walk around in. If I wanted that, I could just step outside. For the full written review of Animal Crossing City Folk, head over to IGN.com.